All right, you guys all know the story. On the first day, God sent man to the Paris. He went, he made $1,400 in a couple of hours. He came back and he saw that it was good. On day two, he sent him to the horseshoe and he crushed a $3 million guaranteed buy-in and took home all the chips and he saw that it was good. What's up? Good morning. I've got GH Poker with me and uh, we're feeling good, man. We are in the zone. We are ready for a day of run good. Are you playing the 300? I haven't decided yet. I'm at late reg. I need some caffeine before I make any decisions. Debating fighting the lines on a late reg or the win, right? Or the win 1100 or cash or who knows at this point. I might just fly off in space with you. All right, let's do it. I dressed up like a freak for this tournament and I walked through the halls and nobody said anything. Here was the reaction of most people. <laughs> and then pretended like they it wasn't a big deal. Let's break down what I wore to this tournament really quick. I wore a golden mullet wig. I wore gold stunna shades. I wore a black cape. I wore a sweatband headband. I wore purple shorts and a chest hair t-shirt. If you see me in public and I look like a freak, it's okay, you can say something. It doesn't bother me, you won't offend me. In fact, I'm doing it for fun. It's meant to be a good time. finished the first four levels on one hand in two hours, which is not great. But uh, we started with 30k, dropped down to 17.5, back around 30k. So didn't accomplish much, but we're not uh, too far behind. So let's see if we can win more than one hand these next four levels. Well, as you can see, we are no longer in the tournament. We won one hand in three and a half hours. Sat there and just folded patiently, waiting for a good spot, and that spot never came. Shoved 10 big blinds with ace nine offsuit and got called by sixes, didn't improve. And that was my tournament. I'm gonna take a break. I think I'm gonna go down to the gym, get a quick workout in. And We're standing here in the Paris waiting for lunch and I've uh, been thinking about the tournament thing. I feel like I didn't play one this morning. I've come up with a plan. After talking with Jerry, Jerry's running well and uh, it's making me jealous. <laughs> no, I'm excited for him, but um, I just wish I was still in there. Like, I barely even played poker this morning. So, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go try to make some money, grind it out at the cash games, and then the plan will be to uh, make enough that we can go sit down and fire again tomorrow. There's four flights. So we can fire again tomorrow, and if we run deep tomorrow, we can still extend this day and uh, end up playing day two. Let me show you a hand that I'm not happy with. This is my first real hand after doing nothing during the tournament, and I don't know if the morning result was clouding my ability to think or what, but I dislike how I played this one. I open ace four suited in the hijack over a limper. Said limper calls, we see an ace ten deuce flop with two clubs. He checks it over to me, and I chose to pot control my top pair. Now I think this is a mistake. I'm playing this hand in position, I have top pair, and if I decide to pot control, I can easily do that on the turn. I should be trying to get rid of any trash that might draw out on me by betting on this flop, and I'd be happy to take the pot down here. I have a weak top pair. So there are plenty of weaker hands that can call here, such as flush draws and lower pairs. I have the range advantage, informational advantage, and as such, I should be pressing that in this spot. Instead, my check back means that we are heading to a turn which is the queen of diamonds. My opponent leads out for $55, and since I underrepresented my top pair on the flop, I'm making the call here. The river is the seven of hearts, and now he leads for $115. He's taking a fairly strong line. I think a mix of calls and folds is appropriate. Probably need to be folding more than calling. I end up tossing in the call, thinking that I'm not blocking any of the club draws, and this is a line they could take. My flop decision definitely gets exposed as a poor one, because I most likely would have folded to a check raise on the flop. My opponent wins this pot with ace deuce suited. I don't think there's any way I'm putting in this much money if I take the other line that was available to me. Hey guys, it's Heidi again. Sean's been doing a ton of editing from Vegas, so he asked if I would help out. So let's see how he does this time. Oh, a match. I learned that that's called a pair. Oh, oh my gosh. There are three sixes out there. 
That's the mark of the beast. Gosh, does Sean just lose? Oh, the referee's putting another card out there. More discs are being played. Sean hit his fist on the table. He seems angry. That's probably because he lost because of the mark of the beast. Oh, oh, the referee's giving Sean all the chips. The other player had something worse than devil cards? Did Sean just pay bribe to the referee? Now we open six seven of clubs in the cutoff to $15 in the button calls. The flop is pretty decent for our hand. We flop showdown value and a draw. This board is not particularly good for our opening range and therefore this is going to be played as a check call. So I check and he does bet and I make the call for $20. This turn is pure gin. The eight of clubs gives us a straight that our short stacked opponent will not expect us to have often. I think there's a chance we might be able to get all of his chips. So I check it over to him and allow him to put in a $50 bet. Now we get to spring the trap. I raised to $125, which is about half his remaining stack. This should look pretty disguised. I shouldn't have the straight very often. And so I think there's gonna be a world where he's gonna put the chips in again with like two pairs and sets and stuff. He throws the rest in. I'm gonna snap call. He turns up five, seven of diamonds. He's got the straight as well. So we're just chopping this one instead of scooping. We follow up our straight with ace king. There's a button straddle to $10 and I open to $30 in the hijack. The cutoff and the big blind both make the call and we're heading to a flop three ways. The flop is Jack of Diamonds, 10 of Diamonds, 8 of Hearts. I check it over to the cutoff, who bets $45. The big blind calls, and I'm going to call here. I have two overs plus a gutter ball to the nuts. The turn is the three of hearts, and we check it over to the cutoff again, who now bets all in for his remaining $230. I don't have to think about this one much. We're going to fold this hand and then this game as well, because we're going to go meet Jerry Harris for a cigar and a whiskey. Jerry and I just finished a cigar and some whiskey. It was excellent. Now we're gonna go to the win. I'm a lightweight, so we're gonna see how well I can play one three with a drink in me. We'll see who plays it better. We're gonna play for a few hours. Whoever comes out ahead, what? Uh, the loser buys dinner tomorrow or something? Uh, yeah, or maybe another cigar and drink.
morning. Welcome to day number three. We're about to play some five ten. What's up? If you missed day one, check it out, bro. Uh, 